what I really loved about the story and about Emma's novel is that the nurse, uh, Lib Florence's character, has to um, transcend reason in order to save herself and hopefully the girl from that narrative war in which she is immersed. Because as Emma was explaining, everyone has a, has a take. It's not about the girl anymore. It's about who con controls the narrative. And I thought that was really made it a story so resonant for these times. You know, back in the late 90s, I came across one of these cases of a fasting girl. Um, anytime from the 16th century through to the 20th, you would have a girl or woman hit the headlines for apparently being able to live without food. You see this kind of recurrent cultural fantasy in Europe, British Isles, Canada, America, in, in different varieties of Christianity or even not particularly in a religious setting. Just this idea of imagine if a girl could live without food. So I decided to set this particular one in 19th century Ireland, which had just been through the famine. Well, Florence Pugh, I mean, she got the script and very quickly she was in and I was over the moon. <laughs> because I knew we had a film, because she's great. She's a great actress. What she does in the film, the character, what she does, it's to say the least morally complex. Florence has such magnetism that you want to, you walk by her side, on her side, uh, despite the very extreme things she has to do. She's just magnificent. And then we really needed to find a great actress for the girl, because it is a duel between the two, and the girl, had to fascinate the nurse and the village, all the adults around her. And so that wasn't, that was scary. <laughs> to, we saw lots of tapes during COVID. And when we saw Killa Lord Scassidy's tape, um, I don't know what happened to you, but I was, uh, I couldn't speak after seeing it. Um, she was 11 years old and had the tape already had such a commitment and depth. I can have a conversation with a director who absolutely gets the book and immediately has ideas for how to retell it in the language of cinema and, and make it new and push the story farther. So I'm looking for that kind of extraordinary intelligence in a collaborator and I knew within 10 minutes of meeting Sebastian that I'd found it. I loved the fact that he wasn't Irish too. I dreaded this story falling into the kind of cinematic cliches of 19th century period drama set in Ireland with there's always sobbing violins and um, wailing illin pipes. You know, even at the level of, say, the soundtrack that you that you commissioned for yeah. this, you know, you, you've come with an originality to every aspect of it. Something else that reassured me was um, your films, which focus so much on women's lives and the extraordinary way you've worked with a range of actresses to get stunning performances. So I had seen things like A Fantastic Woman and Disobedience. And I was like, oh, this is going to work. I knew that... The chemistry between the two was going to be electrical and also like this dual component which is like actors defending their characters and raising the bar because you know the quality is so great uh, was going to also like be the heart of the film and uh, hopefully it is. Mm -hmm.